All right, so we're gonna try something a little different today. Um, I wanna see how the, uh, the camera quality is uh, driving. I have no idea how it's gonna be, no idea how it's gonna turn out, so hope you guys enjoy. So I am going through the processes right now of leasing on with a company, and I wanted to share with you guys uh, my experiences and go through like what exactly I needed to do so, because there is actually a list of things um, it, it's been a while since you know I ran so I have to get all this stuff redone and when I re-registered the truck when I wasn't doing Transport anymore, and I did it like through personal I registered it at 9,000 pounds instead of the 26 that it was at so Let's start down with the list. Um, obviously, you know the obvious things that you're gonna need if you're gonna run commercial, your fire extinguisher, your triangles, and your spare fuses. But once you have those three things, you're good there. So if you get pulled over, you got that stuff. Now, I'm going through the process right now. I need to get a medical card. So I'm gonna go to Concentra to probably tomorrow, um, get my DOT physical. It's about $114.50. So I gotta do that. That is uh, the biggest thing. That will be your determining factor on if you are able to run with somebody or not. I wouldn't say this isn't a list that you need to follow in exact order, but you do need to do all this stuff. So I need to go get a DOT inspection on my truck. Now there's a few different places you can get them. I've seen people get them at like, I think you can get them at the truck stops. Um, I'm going to Fleet Pride here in, uh, in Harrisburg. Um, I think it was like $126.50 to get the inspection done. So you're gonna need like mud flaps, all your lights need to work, uh, your brake specs need to be good, your tires need to be good, and uh, a couple other things, I don't know what else they check other uh, than like the odometer reading. So once you get your DOT inspection and all that, now I am also, I just called the DMV, uh, I need to up my registration. It sucks that I didn't just do this beforehand, but I need to up my registration. What do I need to up my registration to? Well, that's up to you. Are you gonna run CDL or non-CDL? In my case, I am gonna be running non-CDL, um, which is kind of why I like having the 2500 with the dually axle because I get a low GVWR and so I can run a bigger trailer. So yeah, I have the low GVWR, I have a 9,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating. So since I'm doing power only, I can pull a trailer that is 17,000 GVWR which means that that puts me right at 26,000 gross vehicle weight rate, or yeah, gross combined weight rating. So now that's not saying I still have to watch my weight in general. I still cannot be over 26,000 pounds on my weight. I will have to register the truck's gross weight at 26,000. Now in Pennsylvania, we get screwed here in Pennsylvania. It is about $559 to do that. Um, unfortunately, so between that, it's $126 for the DOT inspection. It's $114 for the medical card. So there's 200 and some dollars right there, $240 on top of the $560 for the registration. So that puts you right at around, what's that, $800? So just for those three things. So on top of your fire extinguisher, your triangles and your spare fuses. So you're definitely gonna be like at the bare minimum, you're gonna be at about a thousand. So that's the list that I'm going down right now to make sure that I am completely legal and that I can lease under. Now, the next thing, I know the company's gonna provide this, but you need to look into like the ELD that the company's gonna be providing and all that. Um, in my case, usually uh, it was Keep Trucking that I've always used, and luckily the company that I'm leasing under is going to be using them as well. So I have your ELD to run. Uh, they're gonna send you some forms to fill out, so that's, um, whatever the companies that you choose to go under, they'll take care of all of that and then they'll send you that. So I'm, I'm not gonna go over any of that stuff now. Now, you're also gonna have to look at whatever company that you decide to go through, what kind of insurance you need. The insurance is going to be provided by the company that you lease under. Now, are the, the things you're gonna have to look for is, is the company that you're gonna be under, are they gonna cover your insurance and just take a percentage? Are they going to make you pay for the insurance and a lower percentage? Or how are they gonna do that? So that's another thing. Every time you take a load, you're gonna be dealing with a certain percentage of that load being taken out. Whether you're going with freight or you're doing power only, you're gonna need different types of insurances. So definitely look into that, make sure 
you know, they're, they're obviously they'll give you the correct type of insurance. You're just going to have to figure out what rates you're going to be going for. So that's another thing. You got your insurance, DOT inspection, DOT physical, physical stuff required, your safety stuff, and then your registration. So it all gets pretty expensive once you uh, once you get down to it. Now you're also going to have to look into the labels to put on the side of the truck, uh, depending on what if the company's going to provide them or they're going to make you do it yourself. Uh, you're gonna have to figure out what you want to put on there. You know, company name. If you're doing non-CDL, I think you just need the company name, the DOT number. I believe that's all you need. I prefer to put the gross vehicle weight rating on there, which in my case would be 26,000. So my logic is, if I put the 26,000 on there, they're not gonna see an IFTA sticker, so I don't know if they're gonna give me a hassle for that. Um, but if they see the 26,000, I'm assuming they'll leave it alone because you can't run IFTA. And then you can also run your apportioned tags or you can run regular plates no matter, if you're over 26,000, you have to run a portion. If you're under 26,000, you can run a portion or regular to avoid your trip permits. Like I said, look into each individual state specifically so you know how to be legal and like what's legal and what's not in certain states. You are now going to have to look into, are you going to be sleeping in the truck or are you going to be doing hotels every night and paying for that expense? In my case, I prefer to sleep in the truck. I've never had a problem with it. Um, I'm not really a big fan of hotels. I just like to be able to get on the go, like ready to move at a given moment. I know you can only do that. Uh, you can only go so much with the with the logbook, but that's just my logic. That's just the type of person I am. I prefer to sleep in the truck. So you're gonna have to figure out some sort of sleeping arrangement and uh, bed setup. Uh, most guys, you just take the back seats out, throw a board down, throw a mattress on it, good to go. You'll have to figure out, there's a bunch of videos um, how to make them and so on and so forth. So you'll have to figure out how you wanna do it and everything. So that's another thing you're gonna have to look into how you're gonna sleep. Or you could just run the truck and sleep on your back seat. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter, but I prefer to be comfortable while I'm sleeping in the truck. So, and then you can either choose to run the truck all night or you can run a generator like I do, or you can do both. It really doesn't matter. Um, I've done both and Honestly, I prefer the generator so I'm not wearing out the engine and listening to the thing idle all night. Now, I'm gonna go over this. Uh, I know I've gone over this. You guys saw I did install a uh, fifth wheel or the, the gooseneck rails. You're gonna have to figure out a coupling device for whatever trailer you're gonna be pulling. In my case, I'm doing power only. So I need a gooseneck ball, a fifth wheel hitch. I need a two and five sixteenths. I need a two inch and I need a one and uh, obviously I'm probably not gonna use under a two inch ball for anything. I've only ever pulled one trailer that was under a two inch, um, but you're gonna need that and then you're gonna need a pintle hook for that. But if you're just running uh, with a whatever trailer you're gonna be running and you're doing freight or cars, you're just gonna need whatever hitch uh, is for your trailer. Now, you can switch out the coupler on a gooseneck trailer and put a fifth wheel. Um, that's the method that I'm gonna go if I ever decide to get out of doing power only and I decide to move into freight or car hauling. Um, but you will need a coupling device is, is my point. So you have to look into whatever coupling device uh, your trailer is gonna require or whatever coupling device your company is gonna require if you're doing just power only or RV transport. And I definitely recommend spending the money on a good quality unit. Now this one's pretty obvious, but I'm just gonna throw this in here. You do need a license. You need a valid driver's license. I don't know why I need to say that. I feel like I've gotten that question once or twice. Yes, you need a driver's license to do this. If you're un if you're 26,000 pounds or less, you need a driver's license. If you're 26,001 pounds or more, you need a commercial driver's license, a CDL A. A CDL B you are allowed to have a power unit over 26,000 pounds, but you can only pull a 10,000 pound or less trailer. But yes, you need a driver's license. Now I'm gonna go over another, another couple obvious ones. You're gonna need a cell phone, whether or not your company provides that or not, um, it, it doesn't really matter, uh, but you will need a cell phone. And then I do recommend a laptop if you are self-dispatching. I highly recommend that you get a laptop and in-truck Wi-Fi. Um, I will be running that setup, but I do re I, I recommend that. Now, along with having the cell phone, obviously you're gonna need to be able to take and make phone calls uh, if you're talking to brokers or dispatcher or anybody that you are talking to. A lot of companies, if you're just a company driver, you're not allowed to talk on the phone. Um, but 
you will be required to talk to a broker or dispatcher. Um, so I definitely recommend a Bluetooth. And speaking of Bluetooth, I'm getting a phone call. All right, so as I was saying before I got on that phone call, um, a Bluetooth, definitely recommend it. Uh, I've used Blue Parrot, I've used two of them. I personally don't like them. I see other guys running them. Um, it doesn't seem like they have all the issues that I seem to be having with them. One of them lasted me six months. One of them, like in between nine and 12 months, it broke at nine months and then lasted, I got rid of it at like 12 months. So, I don't know. I just, personally, I don't like the Blue Parrots. Nothing against them. I just, I've had my issues with them. So if you use them, don't think of hate, but yeah. So definitely a Bluetooth of some sort. I use this little guy here. They're like $20, they're quick and easy to replace. Um, I've spent hundreds of dollars on the Blue Parrots and I've had issues with them. So that's just my take on that. But definitely get yourself a Bluetooth to save you some time and possibly a magnetic phone mount. I hate those ones that clamp onto your phone. So get yourself a magnetic phone mount and those are nice too. So you can just click it quick. If you gotta pick your phone up, you can. If you gotta set it down, you can. So it's quick, easy, to the point. All right, something else. Don't forget to ask your company what fuel cards they're gonna be using. Now they'll probably make mention of this. Are you gonna be using fuel cards or are you gonna be paying out of pocket? Um, I know I've made it, mentioned in previous videos. I recommend people have three months worth of expenses in their savings account at all times in case something does happen. So it is nice to have that. So just figure out if you're gonna be using fuel cards or using your own money up front for the fuel. All right, well that's pretty much gonna do it for the video. There's a little bit of obvious stuff that I probably didn't go over pertaining to what you need for the DOT inspection itself. You know, like the mud flaps and the working e-brake and the stuff like that. Um, obviously that pertains to that, so you're gonna need to call and verify that everything is good. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much gonna do it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Give me some other ideas down in the comments. Uh, I am loving doing this. And I do have some good news if you've been following like Facebook or I don't know if I posted on my Instagram, but we are working on actually leasing on with a company sooner than March. Unfortunately, until March though, I have a specific schedule that I need to work around, but I feel like I can make it doable. Um, so that's where I'm gonna leave it. Hope you guys enjoyed, safe travels, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.